Henry, great movie. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, for Christopher Reeve, the inter-Superman was Clark Kent and Cary Grant. What or who was the key for you here? Uh, the character in the comic books. Right. 100%. Um, I didn't go off any live action or any sort of any real humans in life. Um, I just went to comic books and drew as much from the character I could there, as much of a baseline, and applied it to the framework of the script. So what sort of, uh, what sort of attributes were you, were you bringing to it from comic books specifically? Goodness me, that's a very, very complex question. Um, it, it really is. We have I'm, six minutes. I'm not joking. Yeah, we have six minutes, which is now going to be completely taken up. Um, Death of Superman um, is one of my, is the first of my favorite comic books. And in that, you get to see what the character is willing to do and willing to sacrifice as far as the greater good is concerned and to protect those that he cares about and, and the human, human race. Um, then we see in the return of Superman the various ways that the character is perceived by the outside world. And all of these characters who are the faux Supermen um, or Supermans <laughs> are, um, are, they tick all the boxes, they fill all the criteria that one would imagine Superman needs or what Superman is made up of, yet not any one of them is Superman. Yeah. There's a very special thing as that essence which was missing. And when he does return, it's screamingly obvious, even though he's almost unrecognizable. And from that is what I drew those different things, the perception mankind has of this character, whether it be feared, hailed, um, respected, whatever the case, and then finally this figure coming back and wanting none of these things, but still being dominant somehow. Um, and then in Red Sun, we see him being raised in the Soviet Union, right. which is the polar opposite of the place that he's raised. And then you realize that no matter, although people say, oh, he's the American superhero, you put him in the, in the Soviet Union, and it just proves the point that it strips away any nationality from the character. And it actually makes him a universal hero who's trying to do the right thing. At good all times. Yes, good is good. Yeah, right. And then we get Superman, Batman, The Search for Kryptonite. And this is a special one because the entire thing is Batman assisting Superman to find all this kryptonite which is showered across the Earth to collect it so Superman won't be at, threat from, at a threat from the bad guys. And there's this big journey they go through um, with, you know, Batman sort of... There's very funny moments of Superman helping Batman because... He's helping him, even though it's very easy for Superman to do this one thing, and Batman feels ridiculed by it. But Superman's not doing it deliberately to ridicule him. He's trying very, very hard to make Batman feel just better. And then when they find the last piece of kryptonite, Superman gives it to Batman and says, if I ever go AWOL, then this is how you're going to stop me. This is mm. the magic bit. And you see that he is selfless and he's fully aware of the threat he may pose because he's actually thought it through. You know, what if he does go away? Well, what if he changes his mind? Then he's an almost unstoppable force apart from this piece of kryptonite. That's a big part of the script in the film. Um, it's Th just- It's always below the surface. That it's it's, it's a, a giant fear. Yeah. Um, and the, of course, hilarious thing at the end of that is that Batman, you see him walk into a special locked vaulted area and he's got a full room filled with different types of kryptonite already. Um, so he's, he's fully prepared. <laughs> so that's what we can expect in Man of Steel 2 or Justice League? Or? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, if, if these things happen, um, it would be very exciting. I don't know if they will happen. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I mean, if, if Man of Steel 2 or whatever we call it does go into the works, then I'll be very interested to see what, um, what we all decide to push. What was the hardest thing the director asked you? to do during the production? Um, the hardest thing, but the thing which was most necessary and the thing which I probably enjoyed and hated the most at the same time was Look Like Superman. Mm. It was incredibly hard work. Mark Twight and Mike Blevins made the exceptionally hard work as enjoyable as it could be. They made the result possible. And um, yeah, it was exhausting, but necessary, as I say, and Lots very rewarding. chicken? Um, not necessarily boiled chicken, I, I think there was, but they, they tried to keep the meal service as interesting as possible and kept on switching it up. They were fully aware of my psychological state, mm. and so they took very, very good care of me and made sure that 
I was able to do the work as well as the training. Yeah, right. Um, did you develop a shorthand with Zach? Um, yeah. I mean, you do with every director, really. Mm. I mean, it just takes a look, and he's like, or, and then you say, okay, okay, I'll do it again. Or, you know, you just say, uh, may I? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, yeah, thank goodness, thank you. And you both realize where you put your foot wrong. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I guess you kind of do. And there's a great sort of camaraderie and way of communication on that set. Everyone either knew each other previously or enjoyed working on the set so much that it became fun and family-like. Yeah, sure. There's a Facebook group in Australia called uh, Henry Cavill's Cougars. Have they been in touch? <laughs> they, they, they haven't, no. No, really, no. Any words for the ladies? Um, thank you for your support. <laughs> nice work. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Take care.